Yeah. All right, guys. Let's get started on this uh, surprisingly humane time on a Sunday. Um, we have learned this over the years that 11 o'clock, 10:30 possibly is an all right time to start student conferences in the morning. Because honestly, I don't want to be here earlier than that any more than you do. Um, but we have a great event right now. Kevin Butler is going to be speaking. Uh, he was recently <coughs> a regional organizer for Texas. Woo! We already yeah. miss him. Uh, but he co-founded the group at the Secular Students Calling College down in Texas. He was elected as an officer of the Atheist, Skeptics, and Humanists at the University of Texas at Dallas in 2011, and organized the North Texas Secular Student Convention just this past year in 2012. Uh, and he's talking about how to run an awesome table. Give it up for Kevin. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, hope everyone is at least moderately awake. I understand how it is. Um, but I gotta say, hasn't this experience just been f pretty freaking incredible? I might be a little biased, but I think the Secular Student Alliance knows what they're doing. Um, so, welcome to how, how to Run an Awesome Table. Um, this presentation um, was mainly written by um, Ben Blanchard and Sarah Maddox. Um, because they are awesome people and it was an awesome presentation. And I, since, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and I don't want to reinvent the wheel and something something about my availability the last couple weeks. Um, I decided to adapt it. Um, this is going to be a slightly different presentation, but um, they did most of the leg work, leg work, so I felt like I needed to credit them. Um, so with that being said, let's, uh, let's table. So since this is a secular student conference, let's, uh, let's, do it, let's do it biblically. But since this is a secular student conference, we're only going to have eight commandments because, you know, <laughs> we, you know, we, know we, we got stuff to do. You know, we don't have to go through all ten. So, but first of all, before I start with the ten, or excuse me, the eight commandments of tabling, um, let's start off, what is tabling? Tabling can be a lot of things, um, but in the most broad sense, tabling is controlling public relations through physical presence, through the use of people, your members, discussions with the general public, and materials such as handouts to said general public. Um, you can table for a variety of reasons. You can table just because you exist. You can table because you have a big event coming up. You can table because um, you, the event itself is the table. Tabling can mean a lot of things. So your first question might be, well, which group should table? If your group needs more members, you should table. If your group has literature to hand out, you should table. If your group needs to spread the word about an event or a speaker, you should table. If your group has regular meeting times to announce, you should table. So I think I'm just going to sum this up. Your group should table. <laughs> Which leads us straight into commandment one. Thou shalt table. There we go. <laughs> it's first because it's the most important. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you are a group, you should be tabling. Which leads us to commandment two, thou shalt table often. <laughs> there is no such thing as too much tabling. You are making yourself available to the community in a way that's much more impactful than just you know, a list on a website or you know, an event on the calendar or even a bulletin board. It doesn't have quite the same impact as you sitting in your student union or the quad or wherever, uh, being there and interacting with the campus community. You cannot do that enough. Because if you're there, you are really, really hard to ignore. So commandment three, thou shalt know thy tablers. The people you choose to table for your group are representatives of your group as a whole. And so therefore, you need to be a little strategic about it. Uh, the, the people tabling need to have a diversity of opinions. You know, atheists and secular people are not monolithic beings. So as such, we should, since a lot of, a lot of the times, People at your campus may not have met an open atheist before, and they walk by you. You know, you're kind of representing the movement as a whole as well. I mean, it's don't don't take too much pressure into it, but you got you should have a diversity of opinions. You can't have just two radical feminists as awesome as they are. And that's not probably what your group is all about. Same thing with you know the brand new atheists. Same thing about you know the skeptics. Like you know one of each. You know, um, and, and backtracking a little bit. Um, What's the good amount for uh, uh, people at a table? It's usually going to be around two to three. You don't really want just one person unless you just have Richard Dawkins coming tomorrow and you need to spread the word as much as you can. Okay, you can have one person. 
Um, two, two to three is a good amount. A uh, little, little more unless you just have a huge table. It looks a little crowded. Um, but yes, so going back to this, you do need a diversity of opinions because your group is going to be diverse. The people who table need to be patient. Uh, that is vital because uh, you're going to get asked questions, you know, why don't you go out killing people? Why don't you, you know, so you don't worship Satan? Um, or, you know, they might ask you where the room is five times in a minute. Like, just be patient. You're dealing with a general student body. You're, you're there for them. So the people you choose to table need to be patient. You're, the people who table need to have a basic knowledge of the group and the movement as a whole. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. Um, if your group has a mission statement, oh, you're, 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 okay, first, your group should have a mission statement. So uh, have the people tabling know the mission statement in and out. So when people ask, what does your group do? Mission statement and then highlight a couple activities. Now, if your mission statement doesn't really line up with what your group does, you need to talk with your leadership and change your mission statement. Um, but the mission statement should be, a cl I'm not going to go too much more into this, but it should just be a, you know, one or two sentences of what your group's all about, what they do, and what they stand for. And that's the perfect thing to express while tabling. Um, and, and as such, the people who are representing your group need to know it as well. Um, they need to have an agreeable, agreeable personality, or at least pretend to have one. Um, because you are, I mean, you are dealing with people who might not have seen open atheists before. And so you need, now, is, now tabling is not the time to get into ferocious debate about the particulars of theology. That, that is for meetings or for debates. You need to be agreeable, you need to be engaging, and you need to be friendly. The people who are tabling need to have a personal motivation and commitment to the group. Uh, sometimes when you reserve a table and you don't show up, your group is fined. Um, so the people you choose to table need to be responsible enough. Um, and you know, things happen, so you don't have a couple backups to be sure, but you need to, if, if they're tabling or representing their group, they need to be committed to do so. Um, and you know, they need to be enthusiastic group members as well, kind of relating to the back point, because they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the SSA. Well, we do stuff. I mean, it's just, this doesn't make your group look good and doesn't make people want to join the group either. They need to be articulate. Um, they need to be able to you know, talk clearly. They need to be able to uh, get the point across. Um, because you know, if you're in the student union during lunch, it's going to be pretty loud. So you're going to have to you know, be able to you know, account for that as well. Um, this is not the time for your shy members to have you know, their first public appearance. Um, maybe with somebody else down the road. But this, when you're representing the group, you need to be articulate. Commandment four. Thou shalt plan ahead. Uh, this is vital. Uh, this, uh, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to a table. Not, not, not too many as compared to like a speaker event or a conference, but planning ahead is essential. Most of the time, you need to revert, reserve space ahead of time. There's rarely can you just you know, plop a table in the middle of a quad and say, hey, we're the group. Um, most of the time, you're going to have to go through the school's reservation system, where, whatever it is, be it paper, electronic, both, whatever. Um, sometimes, schools I've been to, sometimes it's a week ahead of time, sometimes you only need three days, but it needs to be ahead of time. You have specific candidates to choose. Um, the, relating back to the, uh, you know, who should you choose to table, you, you need to see when they're available, you know, when they have class, when they have work, and change your tabling schedule to fit their needs as well. You need to do the paperwork. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you need to do the paperwork. Um, just to make sure. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like they're having fun. Uh, you need to do the paperwork, um, and that it, it, that's just all about playing ahead as well. <laughs> Here to sabotage us, of course. Um, you you need to have a place to put your tabling supplies. Uh, ahead of time, and it should not be someone's trunk of their car, or their dorm, or their apartment, because people get sick, people have stuff come up, and if you're, all your table supplies are with one person, that means you just can't table for the day. Uh-oh, you know. So uh, it, it, most most uh, schools have some sort of student life office. Try to get a locker in there or something, or you can just if your school doesn't have lockers, just ask them, hey, can you hold on to this for a couple hours? 
uh, some group members are coming uh, and they'll pick it up shortly and they should be okay with that. Um, but if they aren't, ask your advisor if they, you can use their office space for a while. The point is it needs to be not you know, publicly available, but you know, available to more than one person uh, just in case stuff happens. You know, we all have our days. You need to get friendly with the building manager and that would have really helped us this past year. Um, and not, you know, don't bribe them, but, you know, don't not bribe them either. Um, <laughs> but if you establish a personal relationship with a, a building manager or whoever handles the reservations um, at your school or the building in particular, uh, it'll go a long way, um, you know, for those reservations that just happen to disappear or those reservations that, uh, oh, I thought you only needed chairs and not a table. I mean, I mean okay, whatever. Um, but if you could talk to the supervisor or, you know, some sort <coughs> of manager, it can go a long way. And it can maybe help you bend the rules later on. But you, sh you should still learn the rules, absolutely. So, say that you're trying to establish a relationship uh, with your facilities director, team, mm -hmm. however it might be, and you're in a more conservative place that happens to not have tables for you and also the LGBTQ on campus, and it seems to have these repeating occurrences. Now, should you bribe them or should you kind of like I, I'm just curious. Like coming from another another side of the spectrum, when it's not quite as easy as just establishing a relationship, it's like it's like pulling teeth from some of these guys. Any is there any insight you could possibly give for groups like that? And if a student group can be fine for not showing up to the table, can we find them for the table not showing up? <laughs> uh, you'll need to read the, read the policies on that. Um, I mean. I mean, if you have specific complaints, then definitely go to the building manager or the student life director um, directly. Uh, you might try going through your advisor as well to see uh, if they can pull some strings um, from behind the scenes. Um, but even if the building manager just refuses to, you know, recognize your group's existence and you know, the need to exist, you know, still be the bigger, you know, still be the bigger people and say, you know, hey, we made some cookies, have some, you know, um, and just, you know, we're not asking for anything. Or don't even say that. Just, you know, just still be the friendly people that you want to pretend you are. So, <laughs> I'm not saying you're not friendly, but you know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Um, but you need to learn the rules. Um, some, some schools are very particular on what you can hand out, how you can hand it out. Um, you know, I've heard of some schools that, you know, you can give, you know, pretend this is a table, you can give it, you know, give out material from here, uh, but this, no way. You know, it's, uh, learn the rules. Um, so, some schools are very particular about if you can hand out food, if you can take donations. Know the rules, um, and then hopefully the relationship with the building manager might be able to, you know, bend those rules a little bit more. Um, commandment five, thou shalt have supplies. This is, this is what makes or breaks the table. Now there's this awesome organization, I don't know if you've heard of them, they're called the Secular Student Alliance. <laughs> and they will give you free stuff whenever you want. Well, not quite whenever you want. Um, you need to uh, go to this website, secularstudents.org slash tabling supplies, request everything you want. It's tempting to check all the boxes, but only check all the boxes if you really want all the boxes, you know. But, um, but you know, Send, th send in that form about a week ahead of time and they will ship it to you for free. Um, now, if you didn't quite plan ahead and you're like, oh, student orientation is tomorrow or two days from now, um, what do we do? You can talk to us um, or you can talk to the SSA. You'll probably have to pay for big expedited shipping, but that could be solved by planning ahead. Um, but we'll give you free stuff. It's great. Um, other organizations will also give you stuff. Uh, Center for Inquiries on campus program is great. Um, they, they have some great program, uh, great literature. American Atheists have get, has given us stuff before. Um, just you know, ask around, um, and you can usually get it for free or very, very low cost. Know the literature that you're passing out. Ideally, you'll, will, you would have read everything, but I know that might be a little difficult, but definitely, at the very least, know the gist of what you're passing out. Um, so at the very least, when you, know, you hand out a brochure and someone reads it like, oh, that's weird, did you, what do you think about this? You could say, oh, I haven't read it in a while, let me, you know. <laughs> um, but you, you definitely need to know the gist. Um, and, and so you know what to give out to which people depending on you know, what they say. Um, and you, your table needs to look spiffy too. Um, you can have a multi-level brochure stack like this if you have a lot of brochures or just you know, one or two standalone ones really make a difference. Um, I mean, push comes to shove, yeah, you could put the brochures on the ground, but, or not on the ground, on the, on the top of the table. Um, but it really, really makes your group look professional and classy if you have just one or two brochure stands. It, it really makes a big difference. You can get a banner. If your group is the SSA at 
derp you or derp use SSA, we will send you a banner for free. Okay, I can't keep saying we, I'm s sorry. The organization I used to work for <laughs> will send you a banner for free. Um, but if you're not a branded affiliate, if you're not, or, or otherwise have a different event that you don't quite want to use an SSA banner for, markers and poster board go a long way. And you can make that look good uh, or just as good as a vinyl banner. Um, We've also had a lot of success using like those science fair trifold boards. Um, they uh, they do a good job as well. Yes. I, we have one of those. Um, mm. Can we also get one with the, new, with the newer? Absolutely. Just send a new tabling request. To say, hey, we have it. We have the old logo banner. Can we have a new logo banner? And Nick will take care of it. Great. Nick is just amazing. <laughs> I love you, Nick for when you watch this later. I'm looking at the camera right now. <laughs> um, sign up sheet for email addresses. So, so vital. People are going to come up to you saying, hey, I'm interested in this group. And then you're like, great, cool. Well, hope you come. I mean, you need to have some sort of communication with them later. And if it's just a small little email, you don't need to do a full on newsletter all the time. But just to acknowledge, hey, this is when we meet after they come to the table. It's so vital. Um, you can print out something really easy on Word. You know, it takes five minutes. But if you're in a rush, you forgot to print it, and you can use the back of a sheet of paper or notebook paper or whatever. You can also use um, a laptop. You could go on Google Forms, and you know if you have a good internet connection and you know a power outlet, you know that makes your group look pretty cool as well. Yes. Yeah, I recommend that you use a computer, even if it's just Word or whatever, because mm, yeah. we've been to conferences. We collect you know 200 emails, and we can only read about 10. Oh, handwriting. Yeah, I forget. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. So yeah, a computer is ideal, but if, I mean, if you don't have access to a laptop, I mean, a sheet of paper will work just fine. But yeah, people's handwritings, they're, they're not good. Um, you also want a donation cup, box, or bowl. Again, <coughs> look at the rules for your school. Or your school might be really particular. Um, but it's the, one of the greatest ways to get money is just ask for it and have an opportunity for people to give money. So even if you don't even mention the donation box, as long as it says donations, people might throw it your way. Or if you come, or somebody comes up to your table and say, oh, I want to join a group. When do you meet? Oh, so, oh, I can't meet then. Is there any, any way I can support the group? Well, give us $20. You know, it's, it's, a great, it's a great way. You'd be surprised how often that works and how well that works. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, if you get in an argument with somebody at a table and you know, it seems a little heated. Even people sympathetic to your cause may not, might not even be secular. Like, oh, that was a, that was a really weird person here. Just oh, well, you know, hope for the best. I mean, it's happened before. <laughs> Handouts. These need to be specific to your group, and that requires you know making them ahead of time. Uh, yeah, the SSA, CFI, whatever will send you whatever you want, but it's not really limited. It's not really specific to your group. So all you really need is just a quarter sheet of paper saying this is our group. This is when we meet. Here's our website and email. That's really all you need. Um, you know, print them. You know, even quarter page, eighth page. So you save on paper. You just cut them up ahead of time, um, and it gives specific information about your group. And freebies. Um, I mean, everything is going to be free, but um, uh, these are you know, a little little different. Like buttons, stickers, pens. Um, this one was for Darwin Day at this group, um, and so they uh, had Darwin Valentines. I select you naturally. It's. Uh, <laughs> Um, but you know, having having you know some free stuff. I mean, college st students in general just love free stuff. So if you have something more than just literature and information to read, um, you know, they'll usually pick it up. All right. Commandment six: Thou shalt have ideal demeanor. This is really, really important. Body language goes a long way. You need to be inviting. You want people to come up to you. You need to be casual. You don't want to look all uptight. You know, you know. Hi, we're we're the SSA at you know the you know <laughs> you know you need, you, you need to be you need to have open hands this is really interesting studies have shown that people respond better when you have open hands if you point no matter what you're doing you come off as really aggressive um, I, I think the only way uh, the only acceptable time to point is if somebody asks you where the bathroom is oh it's it's over there you know um, but otherwise use open hands when you're talking about your group um, or you can use the politician's fist you know something like this um, but it, it, it makes a difference. It's really weird, but you know, that's just how we're wired. You need to be relaxed, you know, kind of with casual. I mean, you want people to think your group has fun. <laughs> um, and if you don't look like you're having fun at the table, you're not going to get new members. 
and you need to be empathetic. Um, you know, now's not the time to rail on the you know, faults of religion. This is the time to get people to join your group or at least you know, come to a meeting. Um, and the name of the game is being approachable. You know, you're here representing your group. You're here to get new members, garner interest, get people to know that your group actually exists. Um, so you, you want people to feel comfortable coming up to you and asking you about your group. Um, and you know, sometimes you know, between classes, it does get really boring. Um, laptops, I, I don't recommend it because that you know, if you're just you know typing all the time, you know, it doesn't really look that approachable either. But a book is fine, or maybe even a cell phone. But you, just, you still need to be you need to be approachable. Oh, I just did that. Okay. Um, eye contact is really really vital too. Now, don't be creepy. You don't go, you know, <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi. You know, you don't want to do that. You, I mean, people, you know, would come within three feet of a table. You know, just you know, look at them for a couple seconds, and if they're not interested, you know, move right along. You know, just nothing. It's personable, and if people, you know, usually if people lock eyes with you, then they're gonna feel guilty and want to come up to you and talk, <laughs> just for giving you the courtesy of looking at their eyes. It's you know, people are weird, but. It works, um, but again, I mean, you can you can easily overdo it, and you can easily be creepy about it. Um, but you know, just just you know, just put put yourselves in their shoes. If you're walking by and someone's doing this at you, like that, that's not approachable at all. Uh, with ideas, um, you're going to get some really inter interesting people to come up to your to your group, um, to your table. You need to stay positive. If they're just railing on you, you're going to hell. Nobody likes you. Um, you're, you're what's wrong with America. You just you, you need to say, well, that's that's interesting. Why, why do you think that? Um, or you know, I disagree. You should come to a meeting and talk about it, um, because we need to be the bigger people here. Because atheists and you know other non-religious people do have that stigma of being awful people, and you know we we need to. We I mean yes, one table isn't going to change the world, but it could change the perception for you know people who walk by. You need to stay positive. You need to use empathetic phrases as well. Um, just turning it back into a question, letting them explain. Oh, why do you think I deserve an eternity of punishment? Okay, that's interesting. You know, now is again. You can you can engage with them. You know, to be sure. But now is not the time to debate them, um, because then you get you know two people on the side of your table debating the whole time, and it, it, it distracts from the you know idea of the club. People want to listen to debate as opposed to listening to whatever your group you know wants to show off right now. Ask, don't assume. You know, people, you know, we get annoyed when people think we're Satanists and don't have morals. So just because somebody comes up to you and says, oh yeah, I'm religious, but you know, I'm, I'm interested in this group, don't automatically assume that they think the Earth's 6,000 years old and they want to you know, damn you to hell. Like, ask, it, it goes a long way. Oh, wh what, do you, what, do you think about, uh, what do you think about God? Like, in, in a lot of areas of the country, you know, people have never been asked that in a public setting before, or even at all. So even if they are religious, you're asking them, oh, what do you think about what happens after we die? I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, it'll, it'll make them think. Even if you know, they don't convert on the spot, you know, just being approachable, ask, don't assume. Even volume. Um, you, we need to be the bigger people here. We, even if someone's yelling, yelling, at, yelling at you, Brother Jed style, just say, OK, I, I disagree. I, I see where you're coming from, though, you know, even, you know, even if you don't. Um, so you know, don't yell at them and don't tell people to calm down because that, you know, you sir, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. That just, that just doesn't work. Uh, it just escalates the situation. And in the end, respect the people, but not necessarily your ideas. Even if someone is trying to tell you that you deserve everything bad that happens to you and it hurts on the inside, you still need to respect the person for the human that they are. Uh, and you can tell them, you can, you, yeah, please tell them, you know, oh, I, that, that hurt me. You know, wh why, why do you think I deserve that? But you still need to respect the person um, in the end. Yes? I, have a, just, I don't understand how they respect someone who told, who told me, well, you're a faggot, you need to burn in hell, and you're atheist, and you need to burn all of hell, or I need to kill you. Mm -hmm. So how am I supposed to respect someone with this idea? He doesn't have any mm -hmm. Well, that is a different discussion for a different time. That is a very good question, though. But in the context of tabling, at the very least, so you're. It might it, 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 it might, it probably will. And, and that's an extreme example. I mean, most people are going to be somewhere between concern trolling and that. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
but I don't have a ton of time. It, it is, in the context of tabling, you need to just keep that in mind. Like, yes, it, it, it's, it's tough. It is tough. But we need to be the bigger people and show that, you know, we're here for a reason. We need to be here, um, even if they don't care about you at all. Uh, I mean, even if only bystanders. <coughs> yes. Yes. Which leads us straight into Commandment eight, Seven: Thou shalt be an accommodationist. Um, again, now is not the time to debate the particulars of theology. And if you're not an accommodationist, just fake it. <laughs> Your group could be the most outspoken activist group out there with everyone draw Muhammad Day and, you know, fiction for fiction. But when you're tabling and trying to garner interest for your group, unless you are just flat out trying to get people, you know, riled up, uh, you, need to, you need to fake it for just a little bit. And then when they come to the meeting, then you can be the confrontationist um, that you really are. Yes? So, so I've had people come up to me at tables and say, hey, I want to debate you right now. And right. What, what, what do you do in that situation? Because I've just taken off to the side and just had a conversation with them for an hour. If, if you have enough people at the table, um, you can do that. But if you got two people and you're there all day, you say, uh, "I can't debate right now. Uh, you know, I'm doing this for my group." You should come to a meeting. And we can talk, and you turn it into an invitation to a meeting. And then wrapping up, Commandment Seven: Thou shalt remember. You need to table early and often as much as possible. You need to have that physical presence on campus. Just being on a list or showing off Facebook groups, you know, it's important to be sure. But it's not quite the same as physical, human, warm bodies sitting in front of you and talking to you and showing that you know, we're people too. Um, use SSA's resources. We, uh, the organization's awesome, and they're, they're here to support you. Uh, so use them. And you know, I'm sure Nick and the rest of the campus organizing team will let you know if you, you know, you're overusing. But that, that won't happen. Um, keep it friendly. Now is not the time to deconvert people. Um, you can engage them. But you're here to table, you're re representing the group, you're trying to get more members, you're trying to show, show your campus community that you're, you know, you're here and deserve to exist. And uh, I think I'm out of time. So uh, you can look at this website, um, there's the presentation on there, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>